So you've decided you want to venture into a cloud computing career, but you have no idea well, what cloud provider to get started with. Now what you've probably done is you've probably gone and Googled who is the best cloud provider to get started with? Who's the most popular? And the answer really is there is no best cloud provider and it doesn't matter who's the most popular. And I think this is a bad thought process for most people who are aspiring to be a cloud engineer to pick their cloud provider. Predominantly what most people are going to do, they're going to just blanket pick AWS because it's the most popular. Then you'll find other people that think, oh, well, I really, I know how to use Microsoft. It's a very popular operating system. A lot of people use it in their day-to-day -day life. Maybe I'll go with Azure. Now, when it comes to picking a cloud provider, there are a couple of different options. If you're completely new to technology, you have no idea what cloud provider to pick. I wouldn't really go with that thought process and the answer is really pick a cloud provider that is in demand in the area you live in now i know what you're thinking oh well i want to get into technology because everyone works from home uh the truth to that is not everyone actually works from home a lot of people are actually still working hybrid they're going to the office a couple of times a week so if you set your purpose to become an aws cloud engineer you dedicate all this time you know six months maybe even 12 months to train up yourself up on AWS and all the other tools required to become a cloud engineer, you start looking for remote jobs that the person with experience gets picked over you. Because let's face it, your your barrier to entry as someone without any experience is obviously going to be less than someone who's already working in technology. That's not to say you're not going to be able to land the job. Is it the best option? Now, let's say you scrap the remote role. You're not looking for remote anymore. You just want to find a local company where you live. And you find out that 70% of the jobs are Azure and you spent all this time dedicating yourself to AWS. Kind of silly of a decision, isn't it? Now, let's take a look where I live and see what the jobs are like. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, I live in the UK. I live in the southwest of England in a city called Bristol. Around about 650,000 in population. And we do not have any big tech company apart from AWS. And the AWS office is in the most bizarre location for not a huge city. Bristol is obviously fairly large, but it's just in a location where nobody really lives. So in order to do a hybrid job at AWS, where I have looked at applying there, and they did state it was a couple of days in the office, it would take me a ridiculous amount of time to travel there. The next nearest big company, to my knowledge, is Microsoft, which is in Reading, which is probably about you know, two and a half hour drive in, in traffic in the morning. No one wants to do that. So always remember there are other industries that you can actually work in, whether that's defense, a bank, insurance, uh, finance, many, many industries. Now let's take a look where I live and see what jobs actually come up. Okay, so we filtered that by Bristol. So let's type in near AWS. Now the key thing to remember is that some job ads have both AWS and Azure in because perhaps a company is using both. So we'll have to bear that in mind also. Wow, so cloud engineer for AWS, we have 66 results. Although that has still brought up this as your role, which probably does have AWS in the description. But as you can see, uh, cloud infrastructure engineer, AWS DevOps engineer. We have another AWS DevOps engineer, even more AWS. Now let's type in Azure and see what happens. We are down to 79 results. Now, as you can imagine, that doesn't balance up to the original cloud engineer search. That's because LinkedIn uses a lot of different keywords. But as you can see, it's very balanced where I live. I can do AWS or Azure. And the key thing to remember is that I'm actually a multi-cloud engineer. So I can do both of these. It's very easy for me to transition between different cloud providers. Now, I am interested to see what comes up if I click GCP. Now, if we just go back to where it said cloud engineer and perhaps take a look at some of these jobs. Now, platform engineer, Azure, a BGSS. I actually used to work here. <laughs> they have a large Azure and AWS function across all of their platform engineers. Now this role will specifically just be working on Azure. Um, I know that because I work there. Now this one here that just says cloud engineer, let's take a look and see what the job actually wants you to do. Okay, so this is another Azure role and it looks like they have a bit of requirement for some for end user computing on SCCM and Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. We have another Azure DevOps engineer here role, which is 70 to 80,000 pounds. We have another cloud engineer role here, looking for a senior cloud engineer to join a fantastic team in a FinTech. Now that is, that's a ridiculously low salary. I'm, I'm sorry, but that isn't normal. If you ever see a cloud engineer job with a salary that low, just know that it's not, it's not a good company to be working for. 
especially for a senior like i'm not i'm not a senior cloud engineer and i earn more money than that already where i work <laughs> so that's ridiculous any cloud engineer job less than 60k in the uk especially in the southwest i wouldn't even entertain it okay here we go we have a cloud engineer remote position and this is on aws and they also want you to have a background of engineering experience in ruby which is quite interesting i don't see that uh, quite often now back to the original point before you pick a cloud provider please check is it in demand where you live because if it isn't and you make a mistake of spending all this time to one cloud provider it's not really going to end up well for yourself the other things to consider like if you're already working in technology and you're an on-prem infrastructure engineer like i was a lot of the work was on a windows domain so it's very easy for me to migrate over to azure which is what i did i became a cloud engineer in azure first before i moved over to aws Perhaps you're a sysadmin, you do a lot of work on Linux, you already know how to automate with Bash. It might be better for you to move over to AWS. And the reason I say that is because people aren't building Windows domains on AWS. And if they are, it's probably not the right thing to do. If you build an enterprise scale landing zone, you really want to do that on Azure. Because let's face it, no company out there is using Linux daily for just average Joe, Debian, HR. You know, they're all using Windows or Mac. Whereas you'll find a lot of companies that actually use AWS because it's slightly cheaper than Azure for resources. A lot of companies like to build their applications and software on AWS. And as we know, most of that stuff is either gonna be serverless or hosted on Linux. Unless you're a complete psychopath and you wanna host your applications on a Windows server. As always, thank you all very much for watching. I really do think this is something key for most people to understand before they do venture into cloud engineering. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching.